Hello, so I thought it would be a good idea to do a video on how long do filters really last on the gas mask. Now I've sort of talked about this before and that was a very theoretical video. It was sort of saying, you know, um, depends totally on what you're exposed to, the type of filter, how in date it is and everything like that. So I thought what I'd do on this video is actually give you a more comparative, maybe, kind of video where I show different kinds of filters of different sizes and then explain how they work. And, well, how long they're going to last sort of based on that. Now important thing to bear in mind is, of course, like I've said, it depends on the age of the filter. So if I show a filter in this video that's expired, I'm sort of talking about when it was new, or if you made a new filter in that design. If a filter's totally expired and it's been open to the elements um, and it's not working, then it's not going to last any amount of time now, is it? That should be common sense. Also, there's going to be factors involved, like I said in the other video, depending on what the filter's exposed to and what elements are in the filter. Um, they may or may not last longer, you know, or shorter amounts of time, but an important thing to note is that the bigger the filter in general, the longer they last. The reason being, the bigger the filter, the more charcoal that is in it, or, you know, activated carbon, whatever you want to call it, um, the more adsorption capacity it has for dealing with gas, at least, and vapour, if we ignore particle filters. Um, so, you know, the longer it works. So let's start off with one of these awful Chinese little filters, the refillable filters that don't work at all. The reason, as I said before, is these filters have too small a surface area on the inside. So basically what that means is, um, you know, there's barely any charcoal in it. If you worked what out, this the filter's capacity was in millilitres, it's not very big. So the problem with these filters is um, they barely work at all. They might work against spraying paint or something not very serious, but not against chemicals at all, because there's not enough room inside the filter to it for it to absorb stuff properly. So yeah, if you have a filter too small like these, they just can't work full stop. Right, here's a Polish FP5 filter, but I'm using this to represent any kind of filter of this size, like the standard 40 mm NATO or you know like the standard GOSS GP5 style filters now these would definitely, um, these obviously work um, and I think most filters like this are rated somewhere between like 4 and 24 hours now of course what they're factoring in there is what the filter is going to be exposed to if you're breathing fast and you're in a really dense cloud of gas or some, you know, something um, then the filters are going to expire much faster if you're controlled breathing in sort of sporadically gassed areas then you know the filter's going to last a lot longer so there's that so, things like FP5 filters and the other ones, you know, you're going to get several hours out of them at a minimum, I would think, if you just freshly opened one. Probably going up to 24 hours if, you know, they're not being exposed to very much. Um, so, you can actually clearly see in a filter like this, which is why I like the shape of these ones, where the particle filter ends, it's there, where the ridges. And then, so this bit here is, you know, how much charcoal is in it. So, again, a lot more. For size comparison reasons, you can understand just how much more charcoal is in an FP5 filter than one of these little Chinese ones. A ridiculous amount more, even though, you know, it's not really very much heavier, to be honest, than the little Chinese filter. So, you know, there's that. It's a well-made filter. So, what I've not got to... I've not got one out in the video, but with the Soviet filters, is it... I'm trying to think of what the number was. It might be EO18K, I'm not sure. Um, they also, um, uh, they're, they're like slightly longer lasting versions, basically, I think it's the EO18K, um, it looks like a GP5 filter but bigger, so basically it's like a GP5 filter with more charcoal in, so obviously that lasts longer than whatever a GP5 filter would last, so again, you might even get that over 24 hours, not entirely sure, it would depend on what they're exposed to, also I've not mentioned cheek filters in this video, but I imagine most cheek filters would be in the several hours range of how long they'd last, just because they're not very big. Um, so, although you've got two of them, when they're exposed to um, sort of vapours and gas, they would, you know, I, I doubt you'd get 24 hours out of a cheek filter, to be honest, maybe 12 hours. It's, it's As I said, it's impossible to really accurately calculate the numbers, but if you just do it by size, they're big enough that they actually work, unlike the Chinese filters, but they're not as big as a 40 millimeter filter so even when you have two of them you know combine the two filters together you're still probably looking at less time than a standard 40 millimeter NATO filter um, if you were thinking about masks like the GSR or the um, Avon M50 
I think each of those filters are going to last just less than the 40mm one, so when you add them both together you're probably looking at slightly longer time periods than um, things, so maybe 6 to like 32 hours, I don't know. Like I said, I'm pulling these numbers out of my ass to a bit, they're educated guesses, but that's what I'd expect. So what filters would last the longest? Something like the EO14s or EO16s, just because of the huge volume of charcoal in these compared to other filters. Um, now, some of these work by just having a particle filter at the bottom and a particle filter at the top, the rest of it filled with charcoal. Other ones work by having like a particle filter down each side, so the air actually goes in each side, then goes down through the charcoal and up through the charcoal, up to another particle filter. But in general, you know, loads of charcoal in one of these. Um, so because the volume of charcoal is much bigger in like box respirator filters, these would last something like, I guess maybe even up to 48 hours, maybe more. Um, you'd probably have to find old training manuals where they actually, you know, explained how long these would last to really know. But these are the best sort of filters, I mean, ignoring the fact that, you know, there might be slightly dodgy stuff in all these old filters. But if you had like a brand new one of these filters, and I think MaskPole does make new ones of these filters um, for industrial use. You know, something like this. I think even it was the mask pole one that was rated something like A3, where I've never seen filters of A2 before, but it was rated A3 just because of the volume of charcoal. Being off topic, if you were just simply having a filter that you wanted to last a long amount of time, having something like this in a satchel with a hose connected to your mask um, is actually the best thing to have. Just because of the charcoal volume, you've got the least amount of worry of it expiring on you, you know, while you're wearing it. So. Yeah, EO14 filters and the EO16, you know, the coffee can ones, um, you know, really good uh, in terms of how long they last. So, yeah, that's what I was just going to say on this video, really. Um, the filters obviously go up in size compared to, uh, you know, as I was saying, it's basically the bigger the filter, the longer it lasts. Um, and as I said, there's, there are factors that affect that, but... For the most part, yes, you can always put a safe bet on a filter with more charcoal in it is going to last longer than a filter that's smaller, especially when there's quite big gaps between them. If you had two filters, um, one was a much better made filter, and it was marginally smaller than the slightly bigger one that was a cheaper made filter, um, in terms of like what's impregnated into it, how the filter is set up, you know, things like that, then yes, the smaller one would last longer, but in practicality, you're always going to have something like an EO14 last longer than a standard 40mm filter. Now, as said, when you get 40mm filters, often there's ones that do really vary in size, even when they're, you know, ones that are designed to be worn directly on the mask, so just use common sense on that. If you see one that's that big, it's going to last longer than one that's that big, most likely. And as I said, the tiny little Chinese ones don't even work, because they're just too small to have a good surface volume in there to actually absorb stuff properly. So, hopefully that's answered the questions a bit better who, you know, for the people who are asking me all the time about how long does this filter last? How long does that filter last? Would this filter last longer than this filter? Just use your common sense. And remember as well, in military terms and civilian terms, if you're using a mask, a filter is generally on there so you can evacuate from an area. You're not desi It's not designed so you can sit in there for ages. I had somebody recently say to me, oh, um, I've heard the Israeli filters are good, but I don't actually want to get an Israeli filter because I've heard that, um, you know, like they're designed for evacuation um, from chemical areas. Yes, that's kind of what a filter in a mask is designed for, unless you've got a death wish. So anyway, thanks for watching, um, hope this video has been informative, and, uh, you know, cheers.